Thursday's match, Sheikh Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa participated in the 36th Supreme Council of Arab Gulf States Summit, along with their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of GCC countries, in the final session of the 36th GCC Summit chaired by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, at Ad Dar'iyah Palace in Riyadh today. The GCC Secretary General, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, read the final communique. الله الرحمن الرحيم الأخوة الأعزاء أصحاب الجلالة والسمو قادة دول مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية يطيب لنا في ختام مشاركتنا مع أخواننا أصحاب الجلالة والسمو قادة دول مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية في أعمال الدورة السادسة والثلاثين للمجلس الأعلى أن نعبر عن خالص الشكر لأخينا خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز آل سعود عاهل المملكة العربية السعودية وحكومته الموقرة والشعب السعودي الشقيق على ما لقيناه من كرم الضيافة وبالق الحفاوة التي تعكس المشاعر الأخوية الصادقة وتجسد متانة الروابط بين دول المجلس وشعوبها وأن نعرب كذلك عن بالغ تقديرنا للإدارة الحكيمة لخادم الحرمين الشريفين لأعمال هذه القمة والتي كان لها أطيب الأثر فيما خرجنا به من قرارات نوعية وما توصلنا إليه من نتائج إيجابية تصب في صالح تطوير مسيرتنا الخليجية المباركة والارتقاء بعلاقاتنا الأخوية وتعزيز مصالحنا المشتركة الإخوة الأعزاء أصحاب الجلالة والسمو بإسمنا وبإسم شعب مملكة البحرين نتشرف بدعوتكم لعقد الدورة المقبلة لمجلسنا الأعلى في بلدكم البحرين لنواصل معا بحثنا الجاد في كافة المتغيرات التي تهم مجتمعاتنا والمحققة لآمال وتطلعات شعوبنا لمستقبل أكثر رخاء وتقدما معربين عن عميق شكرنا وتقديرنا لمعالي الأمين العام للمجلس ومساعديه وموظف الأمانة العامة لما بذلوه من جهود ملموسة في الإعداد لهذه الدورة وتنظيمها والإسهام في نجاحها بهذه الصورة المشرفة سائلين الله العلي القدير أن يديم على الجميع موفور الصحة والعافية وأن يوفقنا ويسدد خطانا لما فيه خير ورفاهية شعوبنا وأمن واستقرار دولنا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The GCC Secretary General Dr. Abdelatif bin Rashid Zayani read the Riyadh Declaration of the Summit 
in which he said that the leaders reviewed the march of joint work, political, social and economic changes being experienced by the region and the world, and their direct repercussions on GCC states, inspired by the historic role and responsibility of the GCC states as part of the Arab and Islamic nation. The declaration said that the tolerant religion and goals and objectives of the Statute of Cooperation Council requires the strengthening and promotion of Gulf citizenship and the common interests of the citizens of the GCC states and ties of kinship and history and common destiny among them. The GCC states also stress their supportive positions towards the Arab and international issues and their keenness to continue to extend a helping hand to people in need. It asserted the GCC state's supportive stance towards the restoration of legitimacy in Yemen, finding a political solution to the Syrian crisis, and fighting terrorism. This is in addition to confirming support and solidarity with the people of Palestine to regain their rights. After that, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa left from the Saudi capital Riyadh to the Kingdom of Bahrain after heading the Kingdom's delegation to the 36th GCC summit, which concluded earlier today. His Majesty the King sent a cable of gratitude and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, hailing the generous hospitality and welcoming reception accorded to His Majesty and the accompanying delegation which reflects the true brotherly sentiments and strong fraternal bonds between the two countries and people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in the Kingdom of Bahrain from the Saudi capital Yalt after leading the Kingdom's delegation to the 36th GCC summit, which concluded earlier today. Upon arrival to Bahrain, he was received by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Riyadh communique issued at the conclusion of the 36th GCC summit this afternoon put forth the Gulf member states' unified vision towards solving a number of lingering regional and global issues. More details with our correspondent Mohammed Ashaban. The 36th GCC summit concluded at the Saudi capital Riyadh this afternoon with a number of resolutions that work towards addressing a wide array of issues while strengthening the bloc's collective stance. The summit comes at a critical time of rising tensions in the region over various security, political, economic and social issues. Being a, an area of prosperity and good governance, we need to protect it. And we need to make sure that those troubled areas around us can find political solutions. So that's why this summit comes at a very important time, as you said. So we are supporting a, solu a political solution on, in Syria, based on Geneva 1. We're supporting a political solution in Yemen, based on their, the outcomes of their uh, dialogue. And we look forward to, be, to play a role in that regard, even the aftermath for the rebuilding Yemen. This is an important role we are playing. The final communique called on further boosting and unifying the region's security forces and intelligence to combat any lingering threats. It denounced terrorism and extremism globally, expressed its support for the legitimate government in Yemen, called for a solution to the ongoing conflict in Syria and the need to unify the opposition factions ahead of peace talks next week. The situation in the region is in such a way that I don't think anyone is able to ignore it, whether it's the Syrian problem or Iraq or Libya or Yemen and also the absolute backing of Iran, uh, backing the terrorists everywhere. On the economic front, the summit called on expediting the articles of the GCC Economic Agreement, including the customs union between the member states, along with unifying a consumer safety law. We are in the midst of um, 
a critical situation. There are seismic changes that are going to take place now. We see things are happening everywhere. The boundaries of countries are changing. There are wars now in the Middle East everywhere. And I think what is going on will have a lasting impact for the uh, next decades to come. The accompanying press conference witnessed a reassertion for the path towards a Gulf Union. It also included confirmation by the Secretary General of a renewal of his tenure for the next five years. The next GCC summit will be held in Manama, and the member states have their work cut out for them in the coming year to arrive at the set goals before the leaders convene again in Bahrain next year. Another successful meeting between our leaders comes to an end, but our vision of cooperation that materialized back in 1981 lives on as we strive to strengthen our collaboration and unity. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain Television News, Riyadh. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Abika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, patronized the opening of Bahraini artist Sophia Kanu Gallery in the presence of the President of Bahrain Cultures and Antiquities, Authority Sheikh Hamid bint Mohammed Al Khalifa. On the occasion, Sheikh Hamid thanked Her Royal Highness Princess Abika for her constant support to art and artists, as well as for her tremendous efforts in enriching the cultural activities of the kingdom. She confirmed the authority will continue to develop the fine art movement in the kingdom, stressing that artist Sophia Khan represents a gifted generation of Bahraini artists. The first VP of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, confirmed that enthusiasm has set in for the finals of the UFC TUF 22. He added that this challenge reflects the willingness and the readiness of the fighters. His Highness said that the fighters showed great moral support during the press conference and held before, held before heading to the finals. He affirmed that this participation will be different than the last especially that this participation is considered the final season of the UFC. He lauded the efforts of the UFC led by Dana White in achieving success in this competition through the significant organization and by providing the suitable environment for fighters. The Bahrain Interparliamentary Group delegation is participating in the 8th plenar plenary set meeting of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly led by MP Abbas Medhi. The meeting is held under the title Strengthening Peace, Reconciliation and Dialogue in Asia and is taking place in the Cambodian capital, Phnom Penh. For more information about Bahrain's participation in this event, we are now joined by Shura Council member, Dr. Abdelaziz Abul. Good evening, Mr. Abul. Yeah, good evening, here. Um, Mr. Abul, can you tell us more about yeah. your participation in this event? Well, um, of course, we are attending the 8th. Um, uh, 
eighth uh, session, the eighth plenary session of the uh, Asian Parliamentary Assembly, and has several um, um, uh, agenda items. Today we had um, three meetings for the standing committees. One of them was, uh, which was which I attended, was the Committee on Economic and Sustainable Development uh, or uh, Economic in Asia. And um, there were so many uh, many items on the agenda. Uh, the most important um, uh, items were uh, discussion discussion on the of the Asian integration energy market, which is uh, timely coming on the agenda because now uh, the uh, energy market is uh, and, and, uh, and not in the shape, particularly the oil market. Oil prices are dumping. Or, uh, uh, it's not dumping, it's just getting it's, uh, down. It's very, uh, the reduction there is very much affecting everybody. And there was an immense discussion on how to deal with it in an Asian uh, comprehensive manner and how would that uh, be dealt with within the, uh, the parliamentary uh, assembly uh, that concerns all Asians. Also, there was an issue on poverty eradication. And this was, of course, important because many, uh, what, what, first of all, Asia is a wealthy uh, continent and has so many natural resources. But again, that is not reflected on the uh, level uh, level of uh, living standard of many population, many of this population in several areas. And there was so much discussion on how to deal with but the, the, the title is Poverty Eradication, although the discussion was on how to deal with the poverty issues and how to maintain a, a, a balance between the growth of the economy and, of course, the, the lifting of the, national, of the uh, living of standards of certain segments of the population in certain areas of, uh, of uh, Asia. Another, another, affair, another item was the financial... Um, um, uh, relation to the economic growth, and it was related also to the UN um, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, and we were discussing the, these issues, and of course um, the matter is still uh, not finalized, but um, there, there was, uh, let's say, uh, collective convention, uh, convention that this has to be dealt with in a uh, strategic manner to make sure that uh, any agreement would not only take effect now, it would have to go for several uh, decades, and therefore one has to plan for it to make sure that all the uh, all the, um, uh, the people get um, uh, benefit from it, not only one segment, but the whole uh, the whole Asian population, particularly certain certain countries. Mm -hmm. And there were some, of course, um, um, uh, discussion on on uh, the uh, environmental issues global warming, climate change, and so forth. Okay, thank you for joining us, Mr. Abel, and updating us on these issues. That was Shura Council Member Dr. Ablaziz Abel. A high-level conference on women and public life from policies to impact closed today, discussing promoting women's participation in public life for inclusive economic policies and equal opportunities in the private sector. The conference is also discussing promoting equal opportunities in parliamentary practices and the role of civil society institutions, in addition to building accountability from strategy to impact. The event is being held under the patronage of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and is organized by the SCW in association with the OECD. The conference is gathering high-level representatives from ministers and heads of international and regional organizations working in the areas of women's affairs, policy makers and practitioners from countries of the Middle East and North Africa and the countries of OECD, as well as specialists from inside and outside of Bahrain. The Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Associations is organizing This is Bahrain event tomorrow at the National Stadium Car Park Rafah in celebration of Bahrain's National Day and the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne from 3 to 11 p.m. For more information about the event, we are now joined by BFEA Secretary General Ms. Betsy Mathewson. Hello, Ms. Mathewson. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell us what's the aim of the event and what are the activities taking place tomorrow? 
Good evening. Yes, I'd be delighted to. First of all, let me um, offer my congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on our glorious National Day and the anniversary of His Majesty's accession to the throne. Um, the Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Association mm -hmm. is pleased to invite everyone under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to This is Bahrain in Bahrain at the National Stadium Car Park tomorrow in Easter Town from 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Now, there will be lots of lots and lots of exciting activities for the children. I'm, I've just been watching the final touches being um, done to the children's play area. Lots of bouncy castles, train rides, face painting, uh, henna. We're giving, um, of course, there's free entry for everyone, and we're inviting all Bahraini and expatriate families to come together to show their love and their devotion for His Majesty King Hamid, for the leadership, uh, our wonderful Prime Minister, um, His Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, our Crown Prince and First um, Deputy Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and of course Her Royal Highness Princess um, Sadiqa bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, who all do such amazing things to make uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain this wonderful country that she is for all of us. Um, also featured are, um, in the indoor arena, over 100 stalls from all of the international embassies. We have clubs and societies, um, all of the religious organizations, schools, NGOs, charities, um, the Shura Council, and many ministries are joining us. Um, throughout the day, we'll be giving away um, free food, snacks, soft drinks. We have uh, raffle prizes, including cash prizes, electronics, and lots of other surprises. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have um, an amazing stage area with grandstand seating, where throughout the day, um, the talented young people of Bahrain from all nationalities will be singing and dancing and displaying their talents and their, their culture. And I'd like to take this moment to invite everyone in Bahrain we are most fortunate, all of us, to live in the Kingdom of Bahrain together, thanks to His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's insistence on our religious freedom. We all live together here uh, as in peace and harmony with peaceful coexistence. And as one family, I'd like to enjoy everyone to join together tomorrow. And let us show our love and devotion for His Majesty, the leadership, the wonderful uh, people of Bahrain who welcome us all into their hearts and for each other. And um, on that note, I'd like to just take a moment, if I may, to say a very special thank you to His Excellency, Mr. Hisham al Jowder, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, for being a wonderful assistant, all of his team, to make sure everything we need at the National Stadium is in place for us. And also to His Excellency, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior. Now, Sheikh Rashid and the Ministry do an incredible job throughout the year keeping us all safe and secure here in Bahrain. We'd like to thank them very much for that. And they're participating tomorrow in many ways, so come and see just exactly what the Ministry of Interior does to keep us all safe. Um, we'd also like to say a, um, a, a thank you to His Excellency Mr. Isa Al Hamadi, the Information Affairs Minister, because tomorrow um, Bahrain Television will be broadcasting live from the area. And we'd like to invite everyone to come, come down, bring your friends, bring your family, and let's get together and celebrate our glorious National Day. Ms. And Betsy thank Matthews. you to everyone for, for listening to me. Ms. Bessie Matthews, and thank you very much for joining us and for giving us these useful updates.